it is to have the student have that sense of validation that I've learned something. And it's taking the student away from being just, I receive information to, I'm a learner, and I've actually learned something. It means that I feel like there's some affirmations going on there. I mean, I want to feel like what I'm putting in is validated, and um, what I'm, the work that I'm putting in and the things that I'm doing, I'm on the right path and I need someone to tell me that I'm on the right path. That means um, that I've learned information and I um, have com confirmed that I have learned correct and accurate information. You know, that's, I think, important. The validation of learning has to do with how well you actually are on the same page as the instructor. Like, you got what they were teaching you, you understood it, and then you were able to demonstrate critical thinking about this subject and, you know, use this word in a sentence or whatever, you know, solve this problem, write me an essay about how the heart conducts electricity, you know. Being well validated to me is when I spend two weeks writing a paper and my instructor actually comments with a paragraph of things of either you understand this really well, this looked really great, this might need improvement, but they take the time to put something on there because I took the time to write the whole eight page paper. In the process of being validated, it is being encouraged to participate, being encouraged to take risks, and in so doing, getting that feedback in the class, in the moment, that uh, yes, you've got it, or no, not quite, or oh, I'm sorry, you're, you're way off on this one. And all of those levels helps the learner understand, oh, I've gotten to this point and I'm off course, I'm on course, I'm actually doing really well. They have really saw the strengths that I was struggling with and took the time to meet with me. I understand they're meeting with, you know, sometimes 12 students, sometimes 30 students, and trying to meet everyone's needs is sometimes hard. Um, but knowing that I'm on the right path and, and being willing to hear my questions and not saying, oh, well, we'll save that for another time. Um, or even if it's not something we could address in class, reaching out to me after class. I mean, I've had instructors do that and say, hey, you had a puzzled look on your face. You didn't say anything. And I did have an instructor email me after class, and I thought that was quite awesome. I didn't expect that. There's a huge difference, in my opinion, between being able to pick out the right answer when you're given four or five to choose from on a multiple choice test versus your teacher asks you a question and says, tell me everything you know about this situation, and then has a rubric that they can grade from when you get a certain amount of points and once you achieve the minimum number of points then you're good to go for that question or something. And to me I felt like that was far more comprehensive because it, it allows me to put things into my own words and then I really am validated by you know the uh, instructor grading it and saying okay this was right, okay no this concept was a little bit off. Um, what you really need to know is blah, 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 or that's not important, this is important. If an instructor doesn't know my name by the end of the quarter, either my first or last name, just my name, and I go up to talk, talk to them about a grade at the end of the quarter and they still don't know who I am and I have to tell them, it's really frustrating. I feel like they could care less who I am and the class is just another job to them. I want to know what my goals are, the expectations. I want to see what the objectives are. I want to see when I'm being tested that they reflect the goals and objectives. Therefore, I know I can pace myself, I can evaluate myself, and then receive validation on top of that says, ah, I have it. I am ready to move on. Peer evaluation is two-edged. I have seen situations where there's been a lot of peer-to-peer -peer instruction, basically, and I do not know if it is good instruction. I do not know if I've actually done my job. I can get a lot of people to agree, but I need that authority to say, yes, you've hit the key points. 
getting into the habit of study groups is one of the most important skills that I developed here. Uh, it was not something that was encouraged. It was part of a, it was a, there was a different learning paradigm when I was coming up through high school. And as an adult returning back to an educational um, perspective, and ha being put in study groups, at first I resented it because I was very much like, I am responsible for myself, and I don't want other people stealing my knowledge. Uh, but what I've learned in study groups is it giving me the opportunity to bounce my ideas off other students and have them say, well, you know, I'm not so sure about that. What about this? And go sometimes they are right. And that was like a really humbling experience for me. It becomes different when someone who hasn't been studying this certain topic for years is explaining it to somebody else. It can kind of, I don't know, almost put it in layman's terms a little bit. And I think when you know the subject, maybe you forget other people don't know the subject like you do. And I know for me, like, sitting down with somebody and, like, I had a pretty good grasp of it. And I would, you know, try and relate to them. And I could help kind of rein it in a little bit, help them get the big picture, and then they could pick up the smaller details. Someone can identify with you and relate with you and know, hey, we're in this together. We may not be in the same program. I may be your competitor, but we're doing this together, you know, and we can get through this. You know, it, it makes a world of difference. Um, it's not just you know, you studying to be your engineer or a mechanic or a hygienist or a therapist, you know, we're all trying to learn something, whether it's a class or a skill or even for something for our, our career set, it, it makes a world of difference when we can encourage each other and validate each other and um, kind of just know that you have some support, you're not alone. We don't know what everyone's situation is, and so it makes a world of difference when you have someone in your corner. One, put the work in. I mean, that's huge. You have to, have to put the work in. If you're not putting the work in, then you can't expect the teacher to put the work in to you know, validate you. You have to provide that yourself. You have to start it. And one, you know, listen, take it to heart. You know, if something's not working, change it. You know, try and find out what you can do to change it. Don't just put the responsibility all on the instructor. You know, you, it's 90% you, really. I mean, you have to be willing to change or adapt or do whatever, but you, I mean, you gotta put the work in. The student has to want to be a learner. They want to be engage in it, ask for it, find time for it. That's a part of the student responsibility to get the level of validation they need. It doesn't matter how wonderful your instructor may be, the responsibility for learning has to be on the student to a certain extent. I mean, there's only so much an instructor can do to present the information. The student has to be responsible for taking it in. And if you're writing comments on my paper, I want to make sure that I get those comments because I want to make sure that what I'm remembering is actually the right information. I like the saying, um, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. So if it's you know worth coming to class every day and have, getting an education, it's worth putting, really putting in the effort to make sure you're successful in the class.